Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Squadcast. I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway, and we are so excited because we have a special guest. But before we get to that guest, I, I mentioned I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway. Joining me, as always, is Malik. We got Steve Vigvari also joining us, and also a special guest, like I mentioned off the top. We got Steve Saylor, AKA Blind Gamer, who is an accessibility advocate and just overall a good content creator and good person. Welcome, Steve. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> I, I always love when I'm able to aw someone, you know, off the top. Yeah. That's always a good sign. That's always a good and, sign. And and speaking of being able to aw someone, I, I see you over there, Camille. You're being humble. You, you know, yeah, being right. super laid back. Winner. Okay, come on. We've got the award winning <laughs> Camille Salazar. Mm -hmm. Adelaide. Come on. Mm -hmm. Best esports host of Canada, Camille, hosting the show. Let's hear it. Come on, oh. everyone in chat. Oh my on. God. My, okay. My cheeks that's your are new red. title, the award winning. <laughs> award winning. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> none of that, none of that. But I do appreciate, um, you know, the recognition from my peers. And, you know, obviously I wouldn't have been able to do that without the work that I've done with Squad and here with you guys. And also the support of great people like Steve in the industry. So thank you guys so much. Um, I want to obviously quickly turn from that and talk about something else uh, <laughs> like Steve. Steve, you know, you've done so much in the industry and advocated for accessibility. Can you just let our viewers know a little bit about what you do? Uh, no, I want to keep talking about you. You're like, no, 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 Steve, <laughs> no, no. We're no. still kidding. I know. Like, no, 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 no. You let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm Steve Saylor. I'm, I'm an accessibility advocate and consultant in the industry. Um, I speak about accessibility in video games and talk about it on, on social media as well as on, on YouTube and on Twitch. Um, but then I also get uh, the opportunity to be able to consult on games uh, to be able to make them as more accessible as possible. Um, games that I've kind of that I've worked on uh, that, I, that I can talk about um, is that I was one of the consultants on The Last of Us Part Two um, from Nine Dog. I was also uh, credited and part of the accessibility uh, consulting for Assassin's Creed Valhalla and uh, Watch Dogs Legion. And essentially what that means is that I got uh, I got asked to kind of come in the studio and just sort of see what they were working on and kind of offer suggestions and how to be able to make them more accessible uh, for uh, blind and low vision users and just kind of over around uh, just sort of general subject matter um, in regards to accessibility. And yeah, that's basically kind of what I get to do on a, on a regular basis. Um, and I also get to show off, this is Landy Nardo. Um, don't mind him. <laughs> if he starts moving or talking, then we have other problems, that I have other problems than just- We'll let you know. Yeah, okay. It's, cool. we'll it'd give you be like, yeah, it'd be like a whole Chucky saga going on, which I mean, I probably would watch that movie. Um, I, obviously, I would want you to be yeah. stay, safe, Steve. Like, of I would, yeah, of, of course. course, but it would be entertaining. If the lightsaber that he's holding starts lighting up, then then I then I've got problems. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you call him Len Leonardo. Leonardo, yeah. yeah. Well, I figured I'm like I have no place to put on my lanyards from different like what conferences and stuff I've been in. So I'm like, well, he's got a neck. I could just hang it on, <laughs> hang it on him. So <laughs> what else do you have going on back there? I see a, a few figures. Yeah. What's so like I've your got, favorite um, piece? Well, I mean, other than Leonardo, um, I've got the the Last of Us Ellie um, that was gifted to me from from Sony. It was the it's the one it's the statue where she's playing the guitar. Yeah. Um, I've got a Matrix thing back here. I've got the God of War uh, statue from 2018. Uh, that's my uh, sort of Xbox kind of shelf. I've got an Xbox pair of custom Nikes and Ooh, that's uh, nice. controllers and and the adapter. Yeah. So those are kind of like my uh, my favorites. And there's a Star Trek shelf down there too. Okay, I was just about to say, because I know that we do have a Star Trek connection. Um, Steve and I, we love Star Trek. Um, <laughs> LeVar Burton for Jeopardy, um, hashtag Star Trek. Just putting it out there. Oh, <gasps> Jordy LaForge, <laughs> I this love that. This was a gift from my brother. This is an original like mug. I remember from those. From the 90s. I like, remember those. I'm trying my to dad find had my wharf. Yeah. To go with you. Wow. That's so this cool. Was, yeah. The, I have like the certificate of authenticity. This was like, yeah. this is from the 90s and it's in really good condition. But I'm like, you know, I'm just going to. That's unreal. Yeah. Have I you, haven't seen those in like 20 years. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Have you ever wild. drank from uh, that? So this is my original tricorder. <gasps> that's cool. It doesn't it doesn't work anymore. Like it doesn't like light up and make the sound effects as it does. But I've had this since I was like 
eight, nine years old, somewhere around there. I find like Star Trek toys are really hard to come by now. Like I, I have a wharf, which is at the very top shelf. I can't get him right oh, now, but like the action figure wharf. Yeah, like, the action like, figure yeah. wharf, yes, and then I used like to have that too. Yeah, yes. he stands on like the uh, emblem, the Starfleet emblem. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, I have that one, and I have the Captain Picard one as well from that from that oh, same set. See, I really yeah. want Captain Picard, and then I have the uh, pop fucks, but that's pretty much all. That I have. Oh, okay. Um, but I really want to try quarter. I feel like we completely nerdified this squad cast oh, <laughs> to the yeah. point oh, where Steve, <laughs> Steve and Malik are just like, all right, you guys, you guys go. I mean, to, be, to be fair, I was a Star Wars person. Oh. Uh, Sam. So, I do have a Star yeah. Wars one, like shelf back there. There we go. Um, I have a Darth Vader, Mr. Potato Head. Um, that's <laughs> and I have like that's a, awesome. I have like one of the the drones of, of one of Darth Vader's Tie Fighter. Um, okay, it's it's the one that like you can control with like, your phone and actually is a, a drone. It doesn't have a camera, but. You know, it's, <laughs> it's I think awesome. we're also missing one other piece back there, Steve. You, you, you know, you got that sign. Oh, yeah, Blind Gamer Steve? Yeah, yeah, why don't you, why don't you yeah. pick that up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's just always there. I mean, it's all, like, you know, it's branding. So I got to like, exactly, sure that yeah. out because that's my, that's my Twitch name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that so. is true. And you recently um, started streaming on Twitch quite frequently. How is that going for you? Uh, it's been it's been insane. Um, just the, the, the love and reception I've had on Twitch. I mean, I've been on sort of Twitch since 2018. Uh, I started playing it uh, or streaming on it because I had a friend of mine who I've known for like now 13 years, 13, 14 years, and he's a diehard like Destiny fan. Okay. And I was like, I really wanted to get into it. So I, I said, hey, would you want to be able to like maybe sort of guide me through the game uh, and kind of like teach me how to be able to play it? And he goes, yeah. And like, like I said, well, maybe we can stream it together and kind of like make some content out of it. And they're like, yeah, let's do it. So we've been doing it every Thursday since 2018 um but and i was on twitch for the for a bit then but then i uh was on mixer uh mm -hmm. i was on there until until rip, uh, rip. until it went away may yeah, it rest in peace um rip <laughs> and then um yeah then so then i started back on twitch and uh ever since then i got i got i got partnered um which was so insane um and uh i've been invited to a few things uh for twitch now that some i can say and uh or some i can't say and um and uh, i was invited to, to be a, one of the hosts for the id at xbox event which was so cool it's like the first it was actually honestly the first hosting gig that I got that in the gaming industry. Um, yeah. That uh, yeah, it was just it was really cool. So yeah, no, the the move back to Twitch has been absolutely amazing. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome! That's awesome, and I love the fact that you are just you're just you're straight up a good person. Like we've known each other for a few years, and like just seeing how mm -hmm. much you've grown, and even what you're doing with consulting. Um, like I'm super I'm super proud of you. I feel like I'm gonna cry, so I, I'm Aww, gonna. Switch the topic so I don't cry. Um, Someday we'll get to work together finally, Camille, because I know we, we were there was that one there was that one project we were gonna do. <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to do um something around cyberpunk, uh, but that yeah. didn't happen. And you know what? Maybe that was for that the was best. Say, maybe that was a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you read the tea leaves on that one. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of like yeah. no, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of cyberpunk news, uh, we're gonna actually be talking about cyberpunk's patch, their 1.2 patch, as well as CD Projekt Red's a Vancouver studio. Before that, we're going to talk about Kojima's deal with Xbox, those rumors, as well as the article that came out from Bloomberg about Sony remakes over new IPs. We'll be diving deep into that conversation. So if you are watching and you have thoughts on that, collect your thoughts, um, and then we'll start talking about it. But I do want to ask you a, a few questions. Steve, not Steve mm. V. I, I need to actually now separate you guys because we you have do. two Steve's. We're, we're going to get into yeah. the thick of it. All right. Just, just call me Steve O. Let's okay. 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 Steve yeah. Or, yeah, Steve -o, yeah. I mean, like, you could, like, yeah, but we're still like white guys with glasses. So I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll take, take my I'll take much mine. either. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You guys kill me. Okay. So, not Steve O, but Steve, I'm going to yeah. ask you, you know, how did you actually start off as a gamer? So, like, what was your first game that you started playing? Playing? Was it your family that kind of introduced you to gaming? So it, it's it's kind of a, a fun story. Um, my I remember my mom uh, took my brother and I to a local video store um, where I grew up. It was called Jumbo Video, and uh, <laughs> and my mom bought uh, an original Nintendo system because uh, yes, I'm an '80s I'm an '80s kid, and uh, uh, she bought it saying that it was going to be a Father's Day gift for my dad. 
but when we gave it to him, he never touched it. So it just kind of became sort of de facto. I think she kind of bought it saying it was my father, the Father's Day gift, but in reality, she kind of bought it for, for my brother and I. Yeah. Um, but it was funny, like we when we first kind of loaded up, like we didn't know anything about video games whatsoever. So my mom actually thought that the, that the system didn't even come with a game, that you had to buy those separate. And oh so we bought the Three Stooges video game oh, no. uh, for the NES. Uh, cause she was the only one that she thought, oh, this is, this will be good for kids. Um, and, uh, and so we, then when we opened it up and we realized, oh, there's actually two other games. There's Mario and there's Duck Hunt. Um, yeah, so, and yeah, and so we, we, we played it. And, uh, I remember actually it was fun. Like essentially my mom, my brother and I would essentially like play Mario. We just passed the controller back and forth whenever we would die, which meant that I didn't really get to play that much because I died very frequently. I used to think that I sort of like really sucked at games because I just didn't have the eye-hand coordination to do it. And I remember actually my mom had beat Mario before my brother and I actually did. Mm. Uh, I remember actually waking up at like, I think it was like probably like one, two o'clock in the morning. And I went downstairs and I saw my mom, like all the lights turned off, except that she was sta- sitting by the, like the glow of the TV. And she was on world eight, like eight, not like the world eight and uh, super Mario. And she was like, she was determined to be able to beat that game. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then she found the NES version of Monopoly. And that's the only game she's ever played since. <laughs> and uh, uh, she'll game just, over. she's addicted to that. Oh my gosh. She's um, an OG go- gamer. Oh yeah. You never want to go up against her with, with Monopoly <laughs> to the point where if you beat her in Monopoly, She'll refuse and say, like, say it didn't happen, um, <laughs> just to kind of keep her streak alive. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I tried to be able to play a lot of games as a kid, but it was it was kind of always I was more watching, like my brother and my friends play than mm-hmm. I got to play because mm-hmm. there was a lot of games I just I couldn't be able to see that well. I had to sit really close to the TV, and uh, that was really difficult because, um, of course, at that time in the eighties and nineties. TVs were really small, yeah. Um, so you couldn't re- like twenty inches was like that was like a huge. It's like big screen TV right there. Um, and so I, I kind of grew up. I was sort of more of a casual gamer at best. And it wasn't until actually even like all throughout my entire life, I was mostly a casual gamer. To, like to the point where I tried to be able to keep up with games, but they became really difficult for me to be able to play. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I, I just it just kept feeding into the fact that. I just thought I sucked at games and uh, to the point where I even I even sold all my consoles. I didn't have oh, any no. I, I basically was like I, I gave up on it altogether. Uh that was a sad day. Um yeah. selling my because at the time I had a 360 and I sold it like I went to like a local store to be able to sell it and it was great to be able to have money like from it, but still it was like it felt like kind of like, oh, that's an end of a uh an era for me. Yeah. Um sure. and then um jumped to a couple years later, um I was sort of joking around with my friends and and i was like you know it'd be funny i did like this sort of like like i've been telling you for years i sucked at games it'd be good to show you like show you proof and then maybe i should just do it like as a youtube channel and then that's kind of where that that whole started and that was like february of like of 2015. wow what a journey um it's Mm -hmm. interesting as well to hear your perspective of older games because you know now i think games with they just have so much graphics. There's so much going on on the screen. So j- just your opinion, do you think it older games like back on the NES era were a bit easier or more accessible for players than it is now? Uh, actually kind of the opposite um, mm-hmm. because a lot of games didn't really have a lot of settings in them. Um, mm-hmm. right. So there was no like, also, you couldn't adjust like the difficulty uh, of a game. That's true. Uh, I know a lot of my friends who basically say that they played game like certain games but they never actually did finish them because it's just the the final boss or whatever um was too difficult so that was generally my my sort of thinking of it all oh, it's just too hard to be able to play um i didn't think about accessibility or that even that it was my disability gone the way like i knew that being blind had a factor in it because like i just couldn't really see that well and and that was that but i never really sort of felt like that, that was the thing that was actually preventing me from being able to be good i just thought like oh that's just a skill that i just don't have is playing right. video games and it actually to jump to even like uh, like all the way to 2017 um after i like had already done my like youtube channel it was mostly just to kind of entertain like people like i kind of got to a point where i was like so bad at games that it was just more funny to watch me fail mm. um and i would laugh at myself at it like it was like self-deprecating humor which was which was great and then i was invited to uh like a, a ux summit in toronto and it was run by ubisoft where they basically had like developers from all across the world coming to Toronto to, be able to learn uh, about UX and UI design. And and I didn't even know 
going into the second day. Like I was, I was on a panel. I didn't even know that that day was all focused on accessibility and disability. Mm -hmm. I kind of didn't even really know what accessibility meant at yeah. that point. And I was, and I was in, uh, literally sitting on stage and I was with people from Microsoft and from Naughty Dog and, and Ubisoft. And I was in a room full of like people from all over the industry. And I actually literally had an epiphany in the middle of that panel where I was like, okay, well, I've been telling myself that I sucked at games for years, but in reality, it was that game sucked for me. Mm -hmm. And sure. then, so that kind of like, that's what really made me think, oh yeah, no accessibility is something that I really need to, to focus in on. And that's kind of where I was like, I wanted to make sure that the kid that I grew like I grew up being like being where I was like it was just too hard to be able to play games. I didn't want that the the kids to kind of grow up now that want to be able to get into video games, um, but can't because of a disability. I want to make sure that those kids can be able to play games and enjoy it, um, whereas I couldn't uh, back in the eighties and nineties. Ah, okay. Wow. That that's um really interesting to see like how you kind of have that epiphany just you know which seems out of nowhere, but you're kind of also in the right place at the right time to exactly. have that like, epiphany. I, I, <laughs> I think actually the, there's like, cause there's a video of that panel. I think you could probably even find that moment of like that just sort of like light bulb moment in my head uh, while I was on stage. And um, it was just like, yeah, it was like ever since that, I just like, I, I was like, okay, I now get it. I now get why the, like the, the importance of accessibility is not just like a, a set of options or features mm -hmm. it's really it, it's there's a it's the human factor it's it's just it's something that be able to like makes allows people like myself to be able to um to to play games and uh and i'm, I'm starting to kind of see developers kind of like take that mentality it's not just a set of options or features or whichever they realize that that's like oh no i'm making it for for, for these specific people like they're putting a face to the things that they're working on yeah, and I think you're doing some great work. Like, quite frankly, it is through your work that I became more educated on the barriers that people have um, when they're trying to play games and how accessibility is actually a really big issue in gaming um, and, you know, trying to figure out how we kind of overcome that. So I'm always actually tuning into your Twitter and your YouTube and your Twitch to actually get your perspective on things and to see what you're up to, um, you know, the latest. So I hope that everybody who's watching kind of does the same because there's so much good stuff that's going on uh, with Steve. And I, I really feel like everyone just needs to pay attention to that, um, especially if we want the industry to grow. Um, yeah. Now, Steve, what yes. is your all-time favorite game? <sighs> yeah, I That's... put it out there. I put it oh, out there. Yeah, yeah, they put, they hit me with the hardball. Um, I would say it's it's kind of a tie. Um, it would I it would basically be, uh, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, or uh, Red Dead Redemption. Um, those two games I spent a lot of time just 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 playing because i love the story and 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 the game so much that i was like i can't i can't stop until i play it i remember uh even with breath of the wild when the, like when the switch came out i was sitting on uh this is when i was working full time i was like and i did like my commute was basically I had to take the streetcar into work every day downtown mm -hmm. toronto and i would sit on the streetcar it was like a good 40 minute ride and i would sit there and with my switch and i was just playing zelda and i'm like there's no way i would be able to have been able to do this before like it was so cool just to jump in and, and and play that kind of game and and i was obsessed with it for for a couple like for a couple months and yeah it's like a, one of those games i just I, I love i love going back to but and then same with red dead red dead was kind of like that last um game that i got to play before i sold uh, my 360 mm -hmm. and it, it like if, if, if i was thinking at that time it's like okay if i had to stop playing video games altogether that's a good game to kind of go out on and right. um and and that was like that was i was that's why i was okay at that point I'm like okay fine with, i'm fine with selling now that's that's changed and i have all the content all the stuff now but um yeah it was just it, like yeah those two games have probably been my absolute favorite ah uh, but then again the matrix online too that's what got me into broadcasting so there's that too matrix that's a, hey yeah that's oh. a that's a throwback right there yeah. oh my gosh that was got what got me into radio um because it was a like a community run radio station in the game where a bunch of community members were like in, in game like in the, in the game where basically started this radio station called radio free zion and oh, i auditioned cool. to be a dj and they accepted me and i was like and i basically was djing for uh all the like a lot of the players anyone that could come out to the, these clubs within the game to the point where when they shut down 
like this is during the beta of the game so when they shut down the game they basically kind of had this sort of like end of world event mm -hmm. where everything kind of like the mold just kind of like faded like like folded in on itself and we as a radio station we broadcasted like it was like war of the worlds uh, <laughs> like it was, we had reporters out in all different parts of the city and like we actually got like mo like because i think it was monolith at the time that was that developed it and we actually got like a special like thank you package uh from them as, as djs because like thank you for being making that sort of end of world event like just this really really cool thing and uh yeah like that one yeah and then i was like at that point i'm like that's what i want want to do is just be in broadcasting creating content and stuff like that so that's really cool i've never uh mm -hmm. heard of that before actually like um that like that's such a obscure job <laughs> oh totally and that thing it was like this is like pre like pre YouTube, this was pre Twitter. This was pre like this was when Winamp was the the, the the audio player to be able to like listen to like any st like streaming station, and uh, and I just so happened to like to be on one of the, like the biggest one. I think like my like my first like stream or first on air shift, I was like streaming for like three thousand people. <laughs> this is like in mid two thousand five, so wow. that's like that's huge just in the, like in those standards uh, standards. I'm like and, and, we, and I kind of miss those days to be honest, like. <laughs> uh because it was just like that's when that's when like streaming was like real and, and, and raw where there was no dmca mm -hmm. or right ra to kind of like worry about so we kept playing like song and we didn't care about what's they didn't care about what songs we played so yeah that was like we played real streaming for the people you know exactly. it's so grassroots yeah. yeah. back then let's just say that there was a lot of requests for uh tenacious d uh during that time <laughs> yeah like wonder boy and, and uh and tribute were the two songs that were the that most sounds about right <laughs> 